this month we're going to highlight the possibility of a below-the-line solid having the ability to form a dust concentration that's explosive. So get your charts, get your books, and uh, we're going to practice with this chemical called zinc stearate. Zinc stearate. So get your charts, get your books. We remember, do we're going to, remember what we're doing, we're sizing up zinc stearate. I guarantee you, I'll put money on it, nobody out there, or few, a handful, have responded to the chemical. So you can't draw a mental picture on something. It's like going hunting for a dodo bird. I mean, how does that look? Where would you ever start? So but you, you know it's a bird. Uh, you know, it's probably got a beak, two feathers, feet, right? feathers, but so, you don't know if it's a dodo bird or a, exactly. or a robin. So that's right. So I go on to uh, Antarctica. You know what the climate is, but you don't know what the weather. Let's see what the hazards are. You go to chart number two, and then you look for the word zinc. You go down to the Z's. All the way down to Z's, and zinc is a yes for the first name. Remember, that's a first name box. So if zinc's in the first name, it's a yes. That takes me to below the line. Now everybody's on the page. Everyone, like a quarterback, call a play. Everyone responding to the zinc stearate, we're running below the line. Below the line. Everybody on the team, everyone that's on the air that can listen to you say below the line. It's, it's, it's like saying uh, uh, full arrest, cardiac arrest, fully involved. You know, it's, it's the same thing. Now everyone goes to the chart, chart two, that has taken our class, and they can see as of this very second, subject to change, zinc steroid is a solid. You think about Tom Brady when he was in the Super Bowl, right? If you watch, he goes to the huddle. He's got a place list on his arm. So if he calls out, they tell him, hey, you're going to run a, a red 14. He's got red 14 there, and then he says, okay, this play is this. Everyone on the team knows what to do based on a red 14. So we do the same thing, same thing with here. our charts. That's why you got the charts. So this is the this is this, Right, the wristband. that's what Brady has on for hazmat. So we go to zinc stearate. It's below the line. Since below the line, state of matter is solid. Solids are heavier than air. They're still toxic. If you breathe in dust, it can kill you. But it's not toxic in parts per million because there's no vapor <clears throat> pressure. It's toxic in milligrams per cubic meter. Okay, so remember, what does that mean for the layman like us? It means milligrams per cubic meter means it's toxic in dust. Then we look at LEL and UEL. No LEL, no UEL, no flashpoint, no carbon and hydrogen. So it's toxic but not flammable. Then we look at corrosivity. Corrosivity. What's the corrosivity of this, Chris? Since it's B, 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 B below the line. What's, B it, what's it say in the standard operating guidelines? It says corrosive pH what? It's blue below because it's a line, base. Right? So if you can remember, B, 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 it's below the line. Our base is and the pH turns blue. And then we talk, we talk a lot about fluorine. So in a below the line solid, I want to know if there's fluorine in it. So I'm saying everything's got fluorine in it. I look at the formula. When I get to, eventually, when I get to the book, I'll know if there's fluorine or not. But for now, everything has everything, fluorine. Everything, everything. All, all, and and yeah, polymerization. All, since yes. polymerization is a below, above the line phenomena, in the size of when we're below the line, no, no polymerization. I'm but gonna, it, could it react with water? Heck yes. I want you to think about an Alka-Seltzer. Does that react with water? Yes. Plop, plop. Fizz, fizz. 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 What do you think fizz, fizz means? It gets wet and it off-gasses. Some of these below-the-line solids are like Alka-Seltzers. They fizz different gases. So, air and water reactive. Um, do we, are they radioactive? Do you know? It, no, it's Could there be zinc stearate 137? I don't know. So, in the size up, they all are radioactive. All dorsal fins are sharks. Then it the says the up. last bullet, go to chart four, let's see if we can put it in a family. All right, that's almost like the second name chart. Yeah, it is the second name chart. Yeah. That's exactly right. The above the line, below the line is based on the first name. The family chart is based on the second name, especially above, below the line like this. You go to the top of the, there it is. There's the alphabetical order of chart number two. You'll go all the way from aluminum to zirconium. Is zinc somewhere the, in between? And there's yes. zinc. Then you go down and you say, and you, if you go down, it ends in ATE. So it's blue. All units responding, we are responding to a blue 11. Blue 11, blue 11. Now everybody knows exactly everyone. Listen to this. This is the chemical no one's responded to. This is a miracle. We're responding all on a call with confidence because within 20 seconds, you called it a below the line blue 11. You know the hazards, you know the meters, you know what to wear in 20 you, seconds. And what it says now in the hazards, for you folks that are not use, using version 20, it used to say toxic corrosive oxidizer. 
Now it says toxic corrosive oxidizer, but if it has carbon and hydrogen in the formula, we have a dust explosion hazard. Okay, so we're going to have to check to make sure it doesn't have carbon and hydrogen, or we could easily have an explosion hazard. I look at zinc stearate. We go to the book, the zinc stearate. There it is, carbon and hydrogen, and throw in an oxygen. So you looked at that first? Yes. Because of all that stuff dealing with the solid, the thing that was going to kill you was a dust explosion. And then here's something new that we haven't talked about. We talk about very little, but it's a big deal if you happen to respond on this call. This is the physical, out of the 677 chemicals, only about 10 chemicals have this physical chemical description. And if you go to the bottom of physical and chemical property, underneath LEL, you see MEC, minimum explosive concentration. How much of this do I need in a confined space for this to ignite and blow up, right? Explosions occur in confinement, 20 grams. 20 grams. So, so here we go with the metric system. What, what's 20 grams? About 150 bucks on South Beach on a no. Friday night. Right. Because we know, what did we learn in high school, Chris? How many grams were in an ounce? 28.3. How, how does he know? Did you learn that in science or the no. parking lot? No, I learned it in the parking lot. And that's lot. about four fingers, right? Yes. It's about four the fingers. Four fingers. Right. Yeah. So when we're talking about the metric system and they're talking about how many grams, 20 grams, since we have drug testing now, we have to use this. We take a pack of sugar. How much is that? That's one gram. $75. Yeah, that's a good deal, $275. <laughs> but that's one, that's one gram. The dust explosion is 20 packs of sugar. If we get 20 packs of sugar in the air like that, in the right amount, in the, mic, the right concentration, if we have some type of ignition source, we have an explosion. The smaller the package, the confinement, the better the confinement, the better it blows up. So this one has, and what makes it blow up? Look at the formula. What may, you, you gotta have fuel, oxidizers, and oxygen and heat. Look at the formula of this one. Where's the fuel? Carbon and hydrogen. Where's the oxidizer? It's right in the formula. The O in there. So what do you need for it to blow up? The right concentration and an ignition source. So let's look at other hazard, Chris. We said it was toxic. Um, the IDLH says not determined. ND. So is it toxic? Sure. Where do we go to look if it's not in the IDLA? We go to the exposure limit, look at the O Chappelle, and you see that the time weighted average, TWA, is respiratory is five milligrams. What we usually like to say in the class, take the milligrams, multiply it times 10, and you kind of throw down kind of IDLH, you know, take liberty with the science or the toxicology to make the point. So what's five times 10? 50 milligrams per cubic meter. Which is not a heck of a lot. Ha hydrogen. Like the pack of sugar, remember, was a thousand milligrams. So it doesn't take a lot of dust. And a lot of people think, ah, oh, dust, no big deal, no big deal. Yes, big deal. You breathe in dust, it can kill you down the road. And remember, IDLH is measured, or, or time weighted average toxicity is measured in milligrams, right? Parts per million is measured toxicity when it's above one in parts per million. But how do you measure LEL in percent? How do you measure minimum explosion concentration in grams, not milligrams? And kind of, if you look at 10, uh, 1910, 146, it kind of tells you in the confined space that if you can't kind of see the end of your fingers when you go inside well, of a confined dust, space. If there was enough dust that Chris couldn't see And his I can't see there, the end of my fingers, that's... the environment I'm in, it has to be grams per cubic feet. Per so cu all you need is some type of spark and those little particles in the air could ignite and blow up. So Chris, since you said it's toxic in dust, there's a chemical physical property that tells me it has to be toxic in dust because it's putting off no vapors. What is that called? The vapor pressure. What's the vapor pressure of this powder? Zero. No vapors being produced. Vapors are measured in parts per million. So if you look at that O Chapelle, it's going to be milligrams because it's dust. And then check this one out. For a below the line, most below the lines don't have LELs. This one has a question mark, which is code for it has. For one. yes. I just don't know what it is. Look at the flash point. Does it have a flash point? 530 degrees Fahrenheit. So it has an LEL, but in our environment where we work, 530 degrees, two, we're never going to reach that but unless yeah, it's but in some type that's, of facility. That's why it's a very important question, now that you know this, that when I'm responding to an industrial site, I ask someone in charge, and let me tell you who's in charge from 35 years experience, not the dude with the Armani suit, 
the guy with the biggest key ring is in charge. He knows more than the guy. He knows in the more suit. than the guy with the suit. Yeah. The yeah. guy in the suit's gonna screw you out of your bonus. The guy with the <laughs> key ring's gonna tell you where the where, how to get in there. All right. So this is what you do. You ask that guy. You know where exactly is this spill? All right. If you walk in there like we tied, and and you can't see the end of your fingers, you gotta wet it down. Wet it down. Take fog stream. Push well, that's down. a great one because we talk about gases pushing it. Well, think about it. You take dry it's sand. It's insoluble, Joe. Right. So you, you push it down. And it makes it into like a mud almost. Right. And that keeps it from it being in the you air. You see it. You see it when they do construction work. When they have when they have dust from concrete or dirt roads. Or right? dirt roads. They yeah. wet it down to bring it down. So when the car drives over, it, you don't get a bunch of dust in there. But air. here's so, a question that you learned from what we're talking about. What about? Are you using the zinc stearate in a chemical process? And he says, yes, man, we're making sugar here. Oh, and what is the temperature of that? Oh, we take it to about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Huh. Why is that important, Joe? Well, look at the flash points, 530. <laughs> so we could have a problem with this thing. First of all, going from a solid to a liquid because the melting point is 286. Then we heat up the liquid that it puts off on the vapors to burn at 530. And you're saying it's at 600? Now we got a flammable liquid. we got a flammable issue going on here. Not just the dust explosion, but flammable. So, is it corrosive? Well, one thing you'll notice when you look at the NIOSH, it doesn't say corrosive very much. So what I do is I look at red 11 on the chart. There was no, was there an X in red 11, Chris? In red 11? In, or in blue red, 11? Uh, uh, blue 11, I'm sorry. Yes, there's a blue. Blue X. And so the chart X. says this is potentially corrosive. The way I do it in is solution. I, I get to the hot zone. I take my pH paper in the hot zone. This is how I verify corrosivity. I take my pH paper, I touch it to the powder. If it turns blue, yes, it is a base. If it doesn't change, it's not corrosive. So learning point, if you don't see the hazard in the book, like we didn't see corrosivity in the book, prove it with a meter. That's all we need to do. Oh, Joe, can I measure this for the PID? Well, that's got a question mark, right? No, it ain't no. Oh, N-A. Hey, did we tell you about the N-A part? There, uh, we got a, this guy from West Virginia, we we're teaching this class. And it was a class of a, a bunch of volunteers out in the sticks of, of West Virginia where the grandfather was the chief, the father was the captain, and this young 16-year-old kid was a volunteer. I think it was Beckley in the conference. And so we asked the kid in the class, hey, what does N.A. stand for? Really, if you're a scientist, it stands for not applicable. But this kid said, ain't none. So we teach that when you see N.A., it means ain't none. It doesn't have one. That so we asked him what that's I, a shout out to the 16-year-old. Yeah, he's probably no, like 25 he's now. 20, he's a chief right? now. We're making moonshine. The same, the same, the same, this, the same. Later in the class, IDLH. He's. I don't like hazmat. So you know, he didn't quit while he was ahead. <laughs> yeah. So remember, what's the hazard of this? It's a solid. If we can wet it and keep it down on the ground, we don't yeah. have the dust explosion. If it's less than you know 600 degrees or 580, we don't have a flammable. But we do have an inhalation, so SCBA. If you need to make a rescue on this one, and I show up on an engine company, and I'm in Turnac here, quick in, quick out. If I go to need, need to go clean it up, I could wear level B so I can throw that away when I'm done. I take a broom, I sweep it up, I sweep it up, put it in a dustpan, put it in an overpack drum, and life is good. Yeah, and I probably put a little wet, a little bit in the, sure. in, the in the recovery drum. Yeah. And if it's corrosive when I wet it, I would use a, a a poly drum recovery instead of a metal. And here's another thing: if it's in a chemical process, and the guy doesn't know what the temperature is, what instrument would you bring in? The temp, the temp gun. gun, right? Yeah. Right. So I could take the temp gun. If the temp gun says, "Hey, it's 640 degrees," if we're dealing with flammable. a flammable. Look. Yeah. Yeah. So remember, the learning point on this one is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some below-the-line solids with carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, like this one, can blow up during, for a dust explosion. Mm -hmm. So you'd look at the formula for the CH and O, but you could also go down on some of them and look at MEC, and it tells you how much dust it would take to blow up. So solids can blow up. Sugar is a good example. That was the name of that place in Atlanta or in Georgia? Uh, Dixie. Dixie Crystal. Yeah, Dixie Crystal is a great example. Yeah, and later on that. on a break, when we sign off, go to sucrose in the book. Sucrose is sugar. And What's look, in the formula of sugar? Right, carbon, C hydrogen, and, and, and oxygen. And it has a minimum explosion concentration. So remember to, to about that MEC, and remember that some dust can blow up. But most of the time, below the line solids, not that big a deal, unless, of course, they're water reactives. So that's this month's chemical of the month, zinc stearate. Uh, I'm Joe. I'm Chris. And we're signing off till next month.
Stay safe. Take care.